I'm Amanda Freed. I'm Leah Amico. I'm Soraya Flowers. I'm Lovey Jung. I'm Mike Candrea, head softball coach of the women's Olympic softball team. Welcome to Sports School. In the following segments, we're going to cover the basic skills of hitting. One of the most difficult skill in any sport is to hit a round object with another round object and try to hit it square. We're going to cover the basic fundamentals from the grip, to the stance, to the negative move, to the positive move, to contact, and to finish. If you can throw a rock, you can hit a softball. The first element we want to talk about when working with young hitters is the grip. We try to grip the bat in the base of the fingers, not deep in the palm of the hand. And this is important because the deeper we hold the bat in the palm of the hand, the more tension we have. So we want to make sure that we stay away from two extremes, holding the bat too weak in the fingers and too deep in the palm of the hand. A great way to learn how to grip a bat is just to take an axe handle and pretend that you're going to grab the axe handle, which is kind of oval and you're going to find that your hand falls right into the bat. The other element is to make sure that we line up our door knocking knuckles. If you remember which knuckles that you knock on the door with, we want to line those up or slightly split the difference. If I do this properly, then it's going to allow me to keep the barrel on the plane of the pitch. If I have too strong of a grip, then what happens is I start rolling over the ball and I also cause a lot of tension not being able to release the bat head. We're going to use Lovey here to show you the proper grip, and if I can have Lovey kind of open up her hands, she's going to show you right now where the bat falls in her hands. And as you see, it's in the base of the fingers, and then she pretends like she's shaking hands with the bat. She closes up the, her hands, and then another great cue is to have the hitter lay the bat on the shoulder. If they lay the bat on the shoulder, relax their elbows, they're going to find that they can get in a nice, easy position to grip the bat properly. The stance truly is cosmetic because we don't hit from the stance, but it really assures you to have a good foundation. Now there's three types of stances we're going to go over. The first one is a square stance, and this is when your toes are equal distance from home plate. If I drew a line straight across parallel to the plate, Lovey's feet are on that line. The two other common stances you're going to see are going to be an open stance which Lovey likes to use because it allows her to see the ball better, and the other is a closed stance. And the closed stance can be a problem right now because a lot of times if you stride closed, you're going to keep your hips closed and you're going to have problems when you start getting into rotation. So we prefer that the hitter, no matter whether they use an open stance, a square stance, or a closed stance, that upon toe touch, that they're going to be in a square position. Now some key elements we're going to look for in a stance. We're going to have Lovey get in her stance. The one thing you're going to see here is she's in a good athletic position. Her feet are outside of her hips. The other thing you notice that her knees are inside of her feet. A key ingredient in the stance is balance. And so we're going to make sure that we have some flexion in our ankles and our knees. I really believe in softball you've got to minimize movement to maximize your efficiency. So it really helps if we can start ourselves in a good strong position. A couple of things that we're going to look for here in the stance. Elbows are down, but we have some spacing between the back elbow and the hip. You see Lovey's bat at a 45 degree angle. This is very important. We want to try to stay away from extremes. And extremes for me is when the bat gets too upright or it gets too flat. Because both of those will cause some problems and cause you to make adjustments that are very difficult in our game. So preferably we want the bat at a 45. We want the lead arm bent in a 90 degree angle, which is very nice. We want her front shoulder nice and soft and relaxed. We want to try to keep all the tension out of her upper body as we can. And finally, we want to talk about plate coverage because I think that's another element 
that a lot of young coaches overlook. If the young lady is too close to the plate or too far away from the plate, they're going to have problems. One of the things we like to do is have our hitters have a routine. And part of that routine is taking the bat with their lead arm, touching the outside part of the plate, and then coming up into their stance. Now we assure that we can both hit the outside pitch and the inside pitch with equal effort. This is a good opportunity. We have Leah and Lovey here just to show you the two distinctly different types of stances. As you can see, Lovey's stance is a little wider. Leah's got a very narrow stance. Leah's more upright. Make sure in the stance that you're comfortable, that you can get a good two-eyed look at the pitcher, that you have good plate coverage, and that you can create some rhythm in your stance. And let's review the grip and the stance. Beginning with the grip, we want to make sure that we keep the bat at the base of our fingers, that we pretend like we're shaking hands with the bat or grabbing an axe handle. The easiest way to make sure that you have a good grip is to lay the bat on your shoulder, relax your elbows, and make sure that your door knocking knuckles are lined up. Key elements in the stance, we want to make sure that our feet are shoulder width apart or slightly wider. It doesn't matter whether we're going to use a square stance or an open stance or a closed stance, but we want to make sure that we can create rhythm in our stance, that we have good balance, we have a slight bend at the waist, flexion in our knees, and our hands at the top of the strike zone. More importantly, you can't see what you can't hit. So make sure you get a good two-eye look at the pitcher. Those are the key elements of the stance. The next principle in hitting that we would like to talk about is the negative move. Uh, some people will call this the load or the trigger, but it's like any bat and ball sport that you watch, you have to have a movement back before you can go forward. If I was going to play golf, I would make a move back before I would hit the golf ball. If I would play tennis, I would make a move back before I would hit the tennis ball. If I throw, I'd have to make a move back before I move forward. Same thing in hitting. We want to make a negative move, and the purpose of the move is to get our weight loaded inside of our back leg and to get our hands in a strong position. Now we're going to have Lovey right now execute a very simple move, but it's a very important move in hitting, and that's called the negative move. And as you can see, when she does that, it's initiated with a heel lift and her weight gets on the inside of her back leg. The other thing is she keeps her hands in a strong position. A very common problem with young hitters is they will start twisting in this portion and therefore they're going to have a hard time staying on the plane of the pitch. So we want to make sure in our negative move that we're shifting our weight back toward the catcher and that we're getting our weight on the inside of our back leg. Last but not least, a very common problem in this phase of hitting is young hitters will sometimes try to make a negative move with their upper body and a positive move with their lower body. And what will happen here is you start separating your power. I'm going to have Lovey kind of demonstrate this, but if she tries to load her hands and then try to stride at the same time, you're going to see her hands start separating from her lower body. Okay? What happens here is we start getting long and we can't be short to the ball. So it's very important that we do that all in one unit. We have to make a move back before we make a move forward. In review of the negative move, it's nothing more than a movement back towards the catcher. Again, we want to make sure that it's initiated with a heel lift of the front foot and that our weight gets into our back leg. The other key element is we're going to get our hands in a strong position. And when we get our hands in a strong position, we want to make sure that we stay on the plane of the pitch, that we don't allow our upper body to start twisting. The next principle in hitting we'd like to talk about is the positive move. The positive move for some people is called the stride. And one thing that you'll see in softball is you'll see a lot of variations, but the positive move is nothing more then when Lovey gets from the negative move, you're going to see her now establish her foundation to hit from, and she goes to toe touch, and then she's in a strong position to now prepare to make a swing. Now, I'd like to bring in Taraya because Taraya's got a little different version. 
Uh, as you saw there, Lovey would make her negative move, then go to toe touch. Taraya's a little different. What Taraya does, she's an early strider. And Taraya will actually stride, and then she'll make her negative move. And then now from there, she will begin her swing. So it really doesn't matter whether you stride or you don't stride or you stride early. The principles of the positive move are the very same thing. In review, the positive move is nothing more than our preparation going from our negative move to the position that we're actually going to hit from. If you remember, I said in the stance, it's purely cosmetic because we don't hit from the stance. This is where we're going to establish our base to hit from, and that is the positive move, or what some people will call the stride. Nothing more than a movement where we take our knee back in the negative move, and now we're going to establish our base with a positive move moving toward the pitcher. If you watch Lovey, Lovey will actually make her negative move and then go to toe touch or her positive move, where Taraya did the opposite. Taraya was an early strider, where she would stride, then she would make her negative move, and then she would begin her preparation to swing from there. So whether you make a negative move and then go to toe touch, whether you are an early strider and get your front foot down early, it doesn't really matter, but the positive move is a very important part of preparing to hit. The next phase in hitting will be the rotational phase. And the rotational phase begins when our weight actually gets into our front heel and we start taking the bat head from connection to bat lag to contact, okay? Now, let's get Lovey in her stance again. And once we get to that toe touch position, a couple of things that are gonna occur. Number one is you're gonna see her hands in a strong position. You're gonna see spacing from the elbow to the hip. This is what's gonna allow her to create some leverage as she gets to the next part of the swing, which is what we call connection. And connection is nothing more than when the elbow and the hands are lined up with the stripe of the pant. If you've ever skipped a rock on a lake, the one way that you can skip a rock is to make sure that you get to this position. If my elbow stays behind my hand, then I'm pushing the bat. If my elbow leads too much, then I'm laying the bat back and I lose my leverage. So one of the key elements in the swing, in the rotational phase, is gonna be connection, where the hand and the elbow are lined up with the stripe of the pant. Now from that, the next thing we're gonna see is bat lag. And bat lag you will see in all good hitters. This is where the barrel of the bat is pointed toward the catcher, the knob of the bat is pointed toward the pitcher, and her hands are in front of her center of gravity, which is her belly button. This is what really creates the bat speed that's gonna occur from here, because from here, she is gonna release her hands in a very small zone, but create a lot of leverage and a lot of speed with the bat head as she gets to the contact point. This will allow us to generate as much impact as we can at the contact point you notice her hand positioning the top hand her palms up the bottom hand her palm is down this is very important because you need to be in a strong position here she's got a nice straight wrist she's hitting against a firm front side and if you notice her hips have rotated one of the great things to see in this phase of hitting if love you'll go back and start all over again in slow motion. She'll go to toe touch, heel plant, and now as she starts to swing, I could actually put a stake right in the middle of her head because she will rotate around that as she swings the bat and gets to the contact point. Great hitters at this phase in hitting hardly move their head at all. The front side blocks, the body rotates, and that delivers force to the ball at the contact point. The last principle in hitting, and a very important one, is the finish. Now the finish will occur from contact, so we're going to have Lovey get into contact, and the next move that all good hitters make is they're going to go from contact to extension. And extension is nothing more than pointing the bat head at the pitcher. Okay, and one thing that I've found with softball players versus baseball players is we have a lighter bat and a heavier ball 
Baseball players use a heavier bat and a lighter ball. Therefore, sometimes you will see them get from contact to extension very quickly. Softball players sometimes will get from contact and they'll be about two frames later before they actually get to extension. But every good hitter will extend from here and the key is that you don't start rolling your wrist till after you get extended. Once you get extended, you start rolling your wrist and then the wrist will take you into your follow through which we would like you to finish somewhere along your back shoulder. Okay? Now, some hitters will actually release their hand. And the one thing I want to show you with Lovey, Lovey does this and she does it very well. This sometimes allows you to stay through the plane of the pitch a little longer. Because see, when we're hitting, we're trying to hit through a very long hitting zone. The longer we can stay on the plane of the pitch, the better chance we have at hitting. So a lot of hitters, what they'll do is they'll get to contact and she'll get to extension with two hands. And then right after that, you'll see her release her top hand and finish with one hand. Nothing wrong with that. But I urge young hitters to realize that she released way after contact. Do not try to release the bat head at contact. You want to make contact with two hands, then get into extension, and then you're able to release if you would like or hold on to the bat with both hands. In review of the finish, we want to make sure that young hitters understand that you do not roll your wrist at contact. We want to make sure that from contact, we get into extension where the bat is pointed toward the pitcher. And then now we're going to start rolling our wrist as a follow through motion. And we want to try to finish somewhere along the back shoulder. You can either release the bat head and finish with two hands holding the bat or if you're going to release the top hand then you want to make sure that you extend and not release until the bat gets toward your back shoulder. In review of hitting we'd like to make sure that we start with the grip. Remember we want to make sure that the bat's held in the base of the fingers not deep in the palm of the hand kind of like we're shaking hands with the bat. We want to make sure that our knuckles are lined up or that we split the difference. The stance, we want to make sure that we have a good balance position, good athletic position, feet outside the hips, knees inside the feet. We want a slight bend at the waist. We want a soft shoulder to make sure that we are keeping our front side lower than our back. We want to make sure that we have a good two-eyed look at the pitcher. And the stance can be either open, square, or closed. It really doesn't matter, but you have to make sure that you get a good two-eyed look that you can create some rhythm and you can see the pitcher with both eyes. Now once we establish the stance, then we're going to go into our first phase, which is the negative move. And remember, the negative move is nothing more than a movement back toward the catcher. We're going to try to get our weight loaded to the inside of our back leg, which is initiated by a heel lift, keeping our hands on the plane of the pitch. We don't want to twist. And then from there, we start our positive move. Our positive move takes us to toe touch, which some people call the stride. We want to make sure in that position there that we have now shifted our weight, where our weight's about 50-50. Our hands are in a strong position. And then from there, we're going to finish up the swing with the rotational part of hitting, and that's the heel plant. Then we get to connection, bat lag, contact, extension, and finish.